On February 24, 2005, a Friday morning, Mark Lunsford woke up to the buzzing from the alarm clock. It was just five in the morning. At the same time, he heard the alarm going off in Jessica's room, his daughter, who woke up at the same time as him to get ready for school. However, that day, the alarm went on ringing constantly. Mark worried that Jessica would be late for school and went to her room. On the door to her room was a signboard made of construction paper with pink magic marker lettering asking her visitors to knock before entering. Mark pushed open the door, anticipating his daughter to be fast asleep with the stuffed tiger clutched in her hands, but froze when he saw that the bed was empty. Jessica was not there, and the front door was unlocked. Jessica Lunsford was born on October 6, 1995, in North Carolina. Her parents got a divorce when she was a year old, and she was entrusted to Mark Lunsford. When she was nine years old, she lived with her father on Sonata Avenue in Hamasasa, Florida. Her grandparents, Ruth and Archie, took care of her when Mark went to work at the Dirt Boys. Last night, Mark had come home late from a date with his girlfriend, but Ruth remembered Jessica bidding her father goodbye with a hug and telling him that she loved him. She was a doting daughter who even called him at work just to tell him she loved him. However, after that night, nobody saw her again. Mark called 911 immediately and reported Jessica missing. Right then, the local police started their investigation, questioning friends and family, and trying to trace her scent with trained police dogs. But there was no trace of Jessica at the end of the day. The next day, the detective agencies joined the search and hundreds of volunteers traveled to Hamasasa to help find Jessica. Days passed and a week went by, but none of them had found anything about the whereabouts of Jessica Lunsford. The police had gathered from Ruth that Jessica was a mild-natured girl and very friendly. She was most particular about her room and belongings and didn't appreciate people coming into her room without her permission. She mostly stayed at home. When a child goes missing, the police normally check on all the known sex offenders in that area. The Citrus County Sheriff's Office did just that in the several days that Jessica had gone missing. They came upon a known sex offender called John Evander Cooey, who was not living at the address registered with the police. Cooey had a long list of convictions against him, starting from drug violations, cocaine cracking, burglary, fraud, disorderly conduct, larceny, and most recently had been arrested and charged with fondling a child under the age of 16. He had moved in with his half-sister, Dorothy Marie Dixon, who lived with her boyfriend, Matthew Ole Dittrich, and her daughter and son-in-law at Snowbird Court, within sight of the Lunsford home. His registered address was miles away from his sister's place. He became their prime suspect. When the detectives arrived at Dixon's place, they only found Dixon, her boyfriend, and her daughter in the house, who denied Cooey having stayed with them. They searched the premises but failed to hit upon any evidence. After 19 days had passed and there was no sign of Jessica Lunsford, the detectives returned to Dixon's place with a search warrant. They looked through the house and the closets, but found nothing fishy. But when they entered Cooey's bedroom, they found some blood on the mattress, and instantly, he became their person of interest. The search intensified, but his half-family only stated Cooey had left their house two weeks earlier with a one-way ticket to Savannah. Cooey had gotten into trouble with the law, all of his adult life. His arrival in Savannah was no different either. Sometime after he had checked into a homeless shelter, the Savannah police picked him up for questioning over a possible marijuana possession, but did not detain him, being unaware of Florida's interest in him. Sensing danger on his way, Cooey moved to Augusta, Georgia, and found shelter at a Salvation Army shelter. By that time, 
the disappearance of Jessica Lunsford had become a piece of national news, and the police displayed Cooey as a prime suspect, urging citizens to report if they happened to come across him. A secretary at the Salvation Army came upon the news and immediately reported Cooey staying at their place to the police. Augusta police picked him up and held him for not registering as a sex offender and contacted the Florida Sheriff's Office. Detectives Scott Grace and Gary Atchison arrived in Augusta on March 17th to interrogate Cooey. After several hours of questioning, Cooey only maintained that he did not know any Jessica Lunsford. During the questioning, Detective Grace pressed him hard, while Detective Atchison followed a milder approach. Cooey was asked to take the polygraph test the next day. During the whole time, he had stressed that he had wanted a lawyer, but had not been granted one. When Cooey took the lie detector test the following day, he broke down and confessed to the kidnapping of Jessica Lunsford and murdering her. He also told them where her body was. Cooey had abducted Jessica at 3 o'clock in the morning on February 24th by entering her house when she was asleep. He had asked her to stay quiet, and she complied. He had then taken her back to his half-sister's place and raped her in his room. He had kept her in bed with him at night before raping her again in the morning. When he was going out for work, he would put her in his closet and ordered her to stay there. Again, she had complied. According to the America's Most Wanted website, Cooey had turned on the television for her to watch through the slightly opened closet door. He had made her a hamburger and made her urinate in the closet so that his sister and her family did not find out about her. She had been inside the closet for three days. During that time, the police had come looking for him but did not find him as he had hidden inside the closet. After they had left, he panicked and decided to bury Jessica even though she wasn't dead. The police found Jessica's body when they arrived at Snowbird Court on March 19th. They located a shallow grave and found the fully clothed body of Jessica Lunsford inside two plastic garbage bags with fingers poking out in an attempt to free herself. Her body was transported to a morgue in Leesburg, Florida, where Dr. Stephen Cogswell performed an autopsy. She had been placed feet first into the first plastic bag and then head first into the second. There were no indications of hassle and the two bags had been knotted securely, making suffocation the cause of her death. He couldn't pinpoint the exact time of her death, but the degree of composition indicated it must have been three weeks earlier. There were vaginal lacerations at the six o'clock position, which proved sexual assault probably six hours before death. Her gastrointestinal tract was empty, showing that the last time she had eaten was three to four days before death. There were traces of cocaine on her body, not due to ingestion, but by being in an environment where crack cocaine had been smoked. On April 1st, 2005, Cooey was charged with first degree slaughter, kidnapping, sexual assault, and burglary. The state decided to seek the death penalty for him and provided no provision for bail. Meanwhile, Mark Lunsford reached out to strengthen the laws of the country so that many daughters like his would not die at the hands of criminals like Cooey. With the help of Charlie Dean and Nancy Argenziano, two legislature representatives, a bill was written to increase prison sentences and conduct electronic tracking of sex offenders so that they could not avoid the scrutiny of law. It went into effect on September 1st. On March 7, 2007, Cooey was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. However, he did not reach his execution date and died of anal cancer on September 30th, 2009.